The Battle of the Chosun Reservoir, arguably the most famous and enduring saga of the Korean War, has left a curious legacy. It was a savage, bitter engagement that saw over 70,000 casualties in just three desperate weeks. And yet today, both sides count Chosun as a victory. In both the United States and in China, the battle was venerated as an example of heroic sacrifice. And both sides have painted themselves as underdogs, fighting against overwhelming odds. But this begs the question, who actually won the Chosun? Well, and you could even go further to say uh, who really won the Korean War, because it's still considered not the end of the war. Uh, there was a truce signed at the end of the Korean War, and there's still big tensions between North Korea and South Korea. So backing up into the battle as to who won it, I think it really depends on your perspective. If you're Chinese, you can say, yeah, they came, in a, they came into North Korea, we came down from China, and we kicked them out of North Korea and forced them back into South Korea where they are today. So if you want to take that approach, you could say, yeah, I guess maybe the Chinese won. I think the way um, Marines looked at it is that even though they were outnumbered 40 to one, they ended up walking out of there and destroyed three of their divisions without losing their division. You took 30% of their combat power and eliminated it. So Marines see that as a victory. Maybe they didn't hold the ground, but they certainly took it to the Chinese. So I think they're probably, in that perspective, they look at it as, yeah, we won. To fairly assess which side truly won this battle, we have to dig deeper into David's analysis. We need to look at both the strategic and the tactical level. Then let's start at the tactical level, because here I don't think there's much dispute about who won this battle. General Song Shi Lun was the commander of the 9th Army Group at Chosan, which included 10 divisions and approximately 100,000 men. There are estimates as high as 120,000 and as low as 85,000 Chinese troops. Shi Lun took his orders directly from the top, from Mao, and China's tactical objective is something we have in writing from Mao himself. The American Marine 1st Division has the highest combat effectiveness in the American Armed Forces. It seems not enough for our four divisions to surround and annihilate its two regiments. Mao approved an operational plan drawn up by General Song Shi Lun that would focus on the destruction of the U.S. Marines first, followed by attacks on other Allied divisions around the reservoir. Mao offered these additional words of guidance. If the battle is well fought, we may annihilate the entire enemy force, or a greater part of it. Even if the battle is not well fought, we may still inflict heavy casualties. Mao's tactical objective at Chosen were not met. The battle was not well fought, the Americans were not annihilated, and the casualty ratio was hideously lopsided against the Chinese. In the aftermath of the battle, multiple Chinese commanders who fought at Chosen were sacked and replaced. That's usually not a sign of victory. Before we get into the more muddled strategic objectives, I think it's worth pointing out that the Chinese soldiers who fought at Chosan did fight hard, very hard, and under conditions just as bad or worse than the Marines. The Chinese are not nearly as equipped as the Marines are. Uh, let's start with the individual Chinese soldier. Um, they have these quilted type uh, uniforms that provide a little bit to the cold, but they suffered much more from the cold than the Marines did. They did not have uh, adequate protection for their hands and a lot of times for their feet. As a matter of fact, a lot of times when Marines were killed or overrun, the Chinese would loot their bodies for their boots and for their gloves just because they were just so desperate. Uh, they also didn't have the advantage of air resupply uh, like the Marines did. Their leadership was um, I guess you could say much more brutal and uh, very unforgiving. Um, a lot of the attacks that they made, we would look at them as almost foolhardy of where they would just literally line up in a wave and they'd start blowing the bugles and coming across these fields, almost like you would see in the Civil War. And the idea was they thought with this overwhelming manpower that eventually they could attrit the Marines enough they didn't care about their own casualties, but they could attrit those Marines enough and finally overrun their positions. They typically did not have a lot of ammunition. 
so they were at a huge disadvantage. No air, no armor, uh, uniform issues as far as the weather. So yeah, they, they had a lot of problems, but they had a lot of people with some really aggressive leadership. While the Chinese leadership may have lost the tactical engagement and failed to meet Mao's immediate objectives, it's much less clear who won this battle when you zoom out to the strategic level. The case in favor of the Chinese is pretty easy to make. MacArthur and his staff were stunned by the surprise attack and ordered a full retreat from the north. So, mission accomplished then? Well, maybe. Chinese losses at Chosin were so staggering between 50 and 60,000 men that Song Shilun's 9th Army Group was wrecked and no longer combat effective. In fact, across the entire front, the PLA was unable to resume offensive operations until the spring of 1951. This completely derailed plans Mao had already made for a second offensive. On the Allied side, there were about 10,000 battle casualties and another 7,000 caused by the cold. That's not insignificant, but it didn't even take the 1st Marine Division out of action the division was still combat effective and remained in theater. So who really won the Battle of the Chosin Reservoir? Honestly, I don't know. It's a clear tactical Allied victory, but the shock of Chinese intervention did lead MacArthur to evacuate North Korea and abandon any hope of reuniting the peninsula. I think you just answered your own question, Tom. It was the Chinese intervention into the war that turned Korea into a stalemate, not the outcome of Chosin specifically. The supposed strategic success the Chinese would later claim from this battle has less to do with Chosan and more to do with the geopolitical ramifications of Chinese intervention. I think Chosan was a clear allied victory and a badly missed opportunity for the PLA. Despite massive numerical superiority and total strategic surprise, they failed to achieve any of Mao's stated objectives, and they failed so badly that it wrecked an entire Chinese army group in the process. Well, there you have it, guys. That's our hot take on the Battle of the Chosun Reservoir. It's a complicated legacy, but what do you think? Who won the Battle of the Chosun Reservoir?